singing the songs of Zion. The uh, trustees have just asked me to mention that we've had to switch off the speakers this side because there's a faulty cable that has been making noise. So you're going to bear with us. Most of the sound will be a little bit unbalanced. Amen. My sheep know my voice. As the deacons take up the morning offering. My sheep know my voice, and the path that I take, they follow wherever I go. Yes, my sheep know my voice, and come at my call, and the strangers voice to they know.
Brother Reason to come and commit the morning offering and tithes to the hands of the Lord. Let us pray together. Almighty Jehovah, we want to thank you so much, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We want to thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this great opportunity that you've given us this morning. That we can all come and assemble in this house, O Lord Jesus Christ, for this one main thing, O Lord God, just to give you thanksgiving this morning. Lord God Almighty, we're just singing now that um, we know your voice, we can listen to your voice, we can understand this calling. And all these, um, your children, Father, they've all come to assemble here because they've had the voice. And they, they know, they're sure that it's you calling, Father. Hence, they've left everything else, O oh Lord God, to come into this house to worship you. Lord God, as part of listening to thee and understanding your word, O oh Lord, the children have uh, stretched forth their hands to give according to your word, O oh Lord. May you bless, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that it will be used for the furtherance of your gospel. We want to invite you as well, Lord Jesus Christ, that you come and be with us in the singing of the songs of Zion to bless us, O oh Lord God, in a mighty way. Bless the song leader, everyone that's going to take part. Father, we commit all these things, trusting and believing in your name this morning. Amen. May we stand to continue singing the songs of Zion. My eyes, my eyes have seen the glory. Oh, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Is from the vintage where the great soul brothers. Those dead who like it, all this terrible sweet song, this truth is marching on. Glory, 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 hallelujah! Glory, 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 hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, glory, 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 hallelujah! His is marching on. He has sounded for the trumpet that shall never sound the tree. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be sweet, my soul, to answer. Be jubilant, and my faith. Our God is marching on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, 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 hallelujah, oh my Lord, he's true, he's marching on, in the beauty of the beloved, Christ was born across the sea, with a glory in his bosom, that transfigures you and me as he died to make men holy. Let us die to set men free while our God is marching on. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh my Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, His truth is marching on, glory, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, oh glory, 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 hallelujah, glory, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, His one more time. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory. glory. Hallelujah. It's true this much. Amen.
Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Amen.
a Sunday school song. I, I see the young people are not singing. They're just watching parents singing. I want to see you little ones singing this little light of mine. Amen. Oh, the teachers will be on you next week. Your Sunday school teachers.
bless you, saints. Surely we are putting our trust in our God. This morning I have a couple of thanksgiving and prayer requests. Thanksgiving uh, uh, from uh, Brother Marion and Sister Etty. We would like to thank God for Jenny Mercies to and from Gabron. The saints sent the love and regard. Thanksgiving from Sister Diana. Thank you for your prayers. My back pain is gone and I feel much better after my injury. God bless you richly. Thanksgiving from Sister Suzette and Salome. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be in your house today. Thank you, Lord, for uh, providing work. Thanksgiving from uh, Sister Karina. Shalom Saints, I would like to thank God for safe journey to and from Zimbabwe. God bless you. Prayer request from uh, Sister Suzette, unspo uh, unspoken request. Prayer from uh, Brother Prince Job, unspoken request. Prayer uh, request from Brother Costa. May you remember my wife who traveled to Zimbabwe for the funeral. God bless you. Prayer request from Sister Gabriel. God bless you, saints. Please continue to pray for our father's restoration. Father, we thank you this morning. You're an awesome God this morning, Lord. We appreciate you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the benefits of this life. Clothing on our bodies, the shoes on our feet, the shelter over our heads, the vehicles you've given us to drive. The songwriter says, these things that I love and hold dear in my heart, they only borrowed, they're not mine. Jesus, only let me use them to lighten my life. Help us to realize, Lord, this morning. Not to make those things our gods this morning. You become the supreme one in our lives. Forgive us this morning, Lord. If we have used these things amiss this morning, Lord. We have done our own things. Many a times we'll make excuses not to be in the meeting. Lord, uh, your servant preached about two weeks ago. The bad knock, Lord. He says we ought to be in your house. We make excuses, Lord, uh, our jobs, we're not well, the children not well, we all sorts of excuses not to come into your house. Yet, Lord, you've ordained us to be here, Lord. We thank you this morning, Lord Jesus. God, this morning, Samuel David declare, the Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. Lord, this morning, help us this morning. Lord, uh, let the people tremble this morning. Lord, when Moses went up to the mountain, the word says he trembled, Lord. He thundered. There was such a presence, Lord. May you come down this morning, Lord. Give each one of us our mountain of experience this morning. And your presence, Lord, will be changed, transformed, Lord Jesus, from these poor, miserable creatures that we are, the real sons and daughters of God this morning. Pray, Lord, you'll help us this morning, Lord. Notes of thanksgiving for safe Jenny mercies. Notes, Lord, for requests for prayer for jobs. Unspoken requests this morning. You know all things this morning, Lord. Oh, yes. 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 Seven sang the song this morning, Be Still, and know that I am God this morning, Lord. Lord, if there's healing that's required in our midst, you said in your word, you sent your word and you healed us. What more do we need, Lord? We don't need anything else besides believing your word this morning. Help us this morning, Lord. Take every son and daughter this morning, whatever condition we are in this morning, Lord. Backslidden this morning, Lord, eh, pray you'll forgive us this morning. Help us to be like that prodigal son, got up, dusted himself, 
He said, in my father's house, even the servants eat of the ask. Lord Jesus, help us this morning. There's plentiful in your house this morning, Lord. Maybe feast at the king's table this morning, Lord. Bless your servant that's ordained to minister your word this morning. May you come this morning and set our fate in the power of the Holy Ghost this morning, Lord. Take control of everything to be said and done this morning. May you be glorified this morning, Lord. Lord, the shepherd of the flock that's not here this morning, wherever he is this morning, may you watch over him as well, Lord. Cover him under your blood together with his family this morning, Lord. We pray you'll have the preeminence this morning. Lord, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask this mercy. Amen. I uh, just would like to announce that we have a problem with the speakers on that side of the building. So we have to turn the volume up on that so that we can try and get it across to everybody. Please bear with us. It's beyond our control. Thank you very much. It's you. As we invite the minister of the gospel this morning, he's saying he lifted me up from a deep miry clay. He lifted me up from the deep morning way. He planted my feet on the king's highway.
worship you this morning. Father, we bless your holy name. We lift you up, Lord Jesus. Lord, we believe this morning if you are lifted up, you said you will draw all men unto you. So this morning, Lord Jesus, we don't want to draw people to ourselves. Lord God, we don't want to have any stage performance or any stage demonstrations, Father. But we are here to lift up your name, Father. For Lord God, you said if you are lifted up, Lord, you'll do the salvation part. You'll do the healing part. You'll do the saving part, the, the redemptive, redemptive work, Father. For Lord, all these attributes must be expressed. But if you are lifted up this morning, you said to Moses in the Old Testament, Father, if they could only lift up the brass serpent. And look, you will, Lord, heal the people, Father. And none of the diseases, none of the serpents, Father, that is flying around, oh God, could, Lord, deceive or even, Lord, destroy the children of Israel. Because, Father, Lord God, you've got the word provided for that day. We pray this morning, Lord, as we are going to go into your word again this morning, Father. Lord, just, Lord, going through the word this morning, Father, Lord God, a few things came again this morning. I believe, Lord, something will be said that will help your people. So I pray this morning that you would, Lord, receive all glory, all honor, all praise. Every need will be met, Father. We pray for that, Lord Jesus. Lord God, that you would, Lord, anoint every vessel, Father. We also pray, Lord God, for your servant, Pastor Hannah, that is resting, O oh God. We pray that you would give him grace and strength, Father. Lord, for every man of God deserves that, Father. So we pray this morning as we are standing behind the sacred desk, O oh God, every man of God that stands, may you use them, Father. May you, Father, speak to your people, Father. Speak spirit, truth, and life. For we commit this service into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Certainly blessed, certainly happy to be here. I was thoroughly touched when I heard the songs being sung this morning. It uh, made me feel right at home because uh, we want to have the mind of Christ. We don't want to say anything that is outside of the word. We want to channel in and zero in on the word. That's all we have this morning is but the word. Amen. Amen. So I'm not a stranger to you. You're not a stranger to me. So we can have some fellowship this morning. So may God richly bless you. I want you to turn with me this morning in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 3. I'm busy at home with a series on Leviticus. I've started the book of Leviticus. Trying to show uh, how that the message of the hour... Uh, the COD conduct order and doctrine, you can find it right there in the book of Leviticus. Yes, but uh, I, 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 I had to channel my thinking because coming here, I, I might be just grabbing on a lot of things. So I thought, no, let me just come in and, and, and be simple this morning. Amen. I don't want to be uh, giving you apples and oranges and, and something bitter at the same time. So we want you to have something sweet all the way. Amen. So may the Lord bless you this morning. Joshua chapter 3 and verses 1 to 3. And Joshua rose early in the morning. And they removed from Shittim. And came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel. And lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days. That the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Remember, there's a clear instruction. There's an order. And you've got to watch the word. When you see the word is being bore on the shoulders of the priest, and they cross the river Jordan. Go after the word. Go after it. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would undertake for us as we commit the service into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. You may take your seats this morning. Praise his holy name. I believe the Lord is good to you. I believe that you have come fresh this morning to receive from the Lord. So we want to speak a little bit this morning on the placing of the word. The placing of the word. 
Now, we have to understand, I'm going to read a quote here in, uh, as, I was with Moses, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee in 1960, 09-11. In paragraph 76, listen to what the prophet says, and he's speaking to the church. He says, this is my desire, brethren. And I want you to hear quickly because now remember the prophet is not only the prophet of the age, but he's also given a Joshua commission. Yeah. Amen. You have to see that because he was, he was a man with many parts of the ministry. Sometimes you'll see he's Malachi 4, he's Revelation 10.7, he's uh, 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 Luke 17.30, a son of man revealing the son of man. So you have to understand the different parts of the prophet's ministry. It's important because if you can see that, it's going to help you in the age that we are living in. Because then you're going to know exactly where you are. So Brother Brennan was also a Moses. He was also a Joshua. He was also an Eliezer. There was different parts of this one man's ministry. Remember, the greatest gift that God could give us was Christ. So we magnify Christ in the ministry of William Branham. Are you with me this morning? So listen to what he says. He says, this is my desire he says, brethren, to see my church cross over into another land. A desire to move over to the other side. He says, if there is something in you. Now remember, this is where the crux lays. If there is something in you. Here, yeah, first, calling. There will be something to respond to that call. He says, just sitting down to sheep raising ain't enough for you. Go into some sort of a business is not enough for you. Just to join church and put your name on the book is not enough for you. He says, because there's something called on across the ridge yonder, across the next ridge, across the Jordan. Until you fall into the arms of God yonder, a deep calling unto a deep. So, brother and sister, this is Brother Brenham's desire for his church that they will not hang around in the wilderness. Amen. That they will not just hang around uh, coming to church and be comfortable with being in, in the message and just, you know, just being here and the music is good and the singing is good and love lifted me and all these wonderful things. Those things had its part. Amen. But there was a desire for us to cross over. And I believe that this message was preached as I was with Moses. So shall I be with thee. It is actually to encourage us. That as he was with William Branham. So he will be with the bride of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. Brother and sister when the prophet died. Amen. Amen. The message didn't stop. Because the angel that came down in the first exodus was the same angel that came down in the second exodus. It is the same angel in the third exodus. Because it's the same angel that spoke to Moses. It's the same angel that spoke to Abraham. It's the same angel that came down to Joshua and told him to go in and possess the land. Be of a good courage. So we're not alone, brother and sister. It doesn't mean that we can't see our leader that is not here. Our leader is not here in flesh, in a corporal body. But our leader is here in another form. And we should have faith that is here with us to do the exceedingly, the abundantly, above all that we can even ask and imagine. We're not alone, brother and sister. Amen. We have somebody that's with us. Which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So that, 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 the, the thing of it is brother and sister. There is, if there's nothing in you calling to cross and go forward. You won't go forward. You can sing as much as you want to. You can dance as much as you want to. You can even cry as much as you want to. But if there's nothing in you calling for that beyond the river. You're not going to move forward. You're always going to be happy. You're always going to be comfortable in just sitting and occupying a seat. But the bride of Jesus Christ is moving beyond just church. We've come out of church life. And we've stepped into the Zoe life. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. There must be a desire in you to cross over to that land. Otherwise, brothers and sisters, what are you going to see the message is all about? Because the prophet says that this message will not go into denomination. In other words, the message cannot be organized. The prophet is so many years off the scene, it still hasn't gone into organized religion. Churches has gone into organized religion. Persons can go into organized religion. But the message of the hour can never go into organized religion. Why? We don't have a hierarchy. 
The only hierarchy we have is Christ leading the church into higher heights and deeper depths. Hallelujah. Let me look at that same message. I want to show you how that Brother Branham was basically uh, uh, taking the, the church further. Uh, let's just quickly go into paragraph 209 of the same message over there. Listen to what the prophet says in paragraph 209, as I was with Moses. Don't worry, we're having church. I know that there's problems with the speakers and so forth, but you can hear me this morning. Is that okay? Amen. I've got a building amplified <laughs> box, so don't worry. I don't really need speakers. We <laughs> I think it's all the blood that's mixed in my body. Sorry. <laughs> Paragraph 209. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. Paragraph 209. This is what he says. He says, and the prophet is praying. He says, God, I'm starting this morning. I'm leaving this signpost. And that should be your desire this morning. Lord, this morning, I'm starting. I'm leaving the signpost. In other words, all the things that we've received in the message of the hour, the vindication that we received was our signpost. But you should say, Lord, I'm leaving the signpost. I'm coming now to the promised word of the hour. I'm leaving this signpost because it's pointing towards a better land. My stumble, I may go through the Amalekites. I may go through the Hittites, through the Canaanites. I may have to pass through my own criticizing. He says, Lord, I'll just keep moving on. I know there's a land yonder somewhere. There is somewhere, some condition, some place we can get to. Amen. Where you'll answer prayer. Whatever we ask will be granted. Not even cancer will stand before the prayer. I know that to be the truth that I believe and wait for Lord as I commit myself to thee this morning. For your service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brother, that should be our prayer. I'm leaving the signpost. Brother, you can't stand at the signpost when the signpost tells you 200 and case to Cape Town. And you're standing there and says, Cape Town. <laughs> you're not going to see the, 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 the sea on the signpost. You're not going to enjoy the beach on the signpost. No, the signpost is only telling you so many cases towards Cape Town. But now some of us are stagnating because we've got certain things that women can't preach. Women must do this. Men can't do that. So that's a signpost. Yes. And you're comfortable with doctrine. Brother, let's get to bearing fruits now. We've come to the fruit bearing season. We have to leave the old post and move over to Jordan, my brother, my sister. There must be a Jordan that must be crossed. If we are going to go into the rapture, you must come a little bit higher. You've got to get a little higher in your faith. Amen. Some of us don't even have faith to cure a toothache this morning. You need rapturing faith to go into the rapture. And you magnify your medication. You magnify your, your doctor. Brother, I had a sister come to me once. She magnified her condition. I said, sister, I don't need a doctor's letter. I'm not a doctor. She came, she brought me a doctor's letter. The doctor said, I must. The doctor, I said, I'm, just a, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physician. I'm not a specialist. You can't bring me a doctor's letter. Say, the doctor said, you must do this. And you must uh, accept me like this. I said, I don't care what the doctor says. I've got another doctor. Yes, Come on, saints. Amen. We shouldn't be comfortable with what medical science is giving us. Brothers and sisters, these diseases that are flying around, it can't hurt us. It can't come nigh unto us. Why in the Exodus God said, none of the diseases that are in Egypt is able to destroy you. It can touch the body, but the real you, it can't. Amen. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. Brother, our faith, our walk is by faith, not by sight. Somebody said to me now the other day, I think we must all wear this mask for the coronavirus. I said, it's in China. Uh, this is not China, and I must walk with that. Uh, I'm not a ninja. Why must I walk with that thing? Why must I walk with it? I'm not a ninja. Brother, I'm walking by faith, my brother, my sister. If coronavirus must take this body down, something must take me out anyhow. Because there must be an exodus. There must be a move from this into another body. If 
it's a gunshot, praise the Lord. If it's an accident, praise the Lord. Whatever comes to your body, something must take you out, brother. You know why? Because God placed you here as a signpost. Glory to the Most High God. Don't worry, we're coming into something here this morning. So it's important that we look at these things. Let's read Hebrews 6 quickly. And then we can... I'm going to read the Amplified Version. But I also want to read quickly the, the normal King James Version. Hebrews 6. Listen what it says. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Leaving... The principles of the doctrine of Christ. That almost sounds like it's like Paul is trying to give us another Christ or another Jesus. Because to leave the principle of Christ and he's the theme principle, it almost sounds contradictory. But if you read what Paul is saying, he says, move forward. You've now been baptized. You've now come to church. Now you need to get into the spirit. You left your home. You need something to be done. But brother, now you've got to get into because it's going to take atmosphere to do things. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It sounds like Paul is preaching another gospel. Uh, and yet you need faith towards God. Every man that comes to God must believe that he is. But Paul says you must even live that part of believing God is. <laughs> it, it sounds very contradicting. It sounds confusing. That's why the denominations are preaching Paul was a bit cuckoo. Yes. I've sat with them already for a few occasions. They said to me, Paul was a bit off. Say, Paul didn't know what he was speaking. How can you leave the principles of the doctrines of Christ? We need those principles, yes. But you don't have to stay there. <laughs> if you can understand Paul's ministry, then you will understand William Branham's ministry. Because Paul's ministry and William Branham's ministry is a parallel ministry. And both of them is preaching the rapture. Because Paul could take us out from law and bring us to grace. Yeah. William Branham is taking us out of the word into the revealed word. Yeah. That sounds contradicting. Eh? Yeah. There's deeper things, brother and sister. <laughs> I'm shaking you just a little bit because <laughs> some of you are thinking, what, 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 must we really leave that? And don't we need faith? Yes, we need faith. But this is the faith. Listen to what it says. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. And of faith. Oh that is, that is very deep for some of you. Verses 2. Let me even take it further. Of the doctrine. You, want, you, you imagine. We must come every service. And tell you you must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be baptized. Brother, is there nothing else? Is there nothing else? I was a little boy and I went to church. And every Sunday, brother, in the Pentecostal church, we used to hear the preacher saying, you must repent. You must dress right. Remember, they were so close to the message. They never preached the prophet, but we had the dress code. And all we could hear every service, you sisters, dress right. I was just a little boy. Sisters dress right. This is the Pentecostal group. Sisters dress right. You must be repent. You must repent. You must repent. And every service is Noah and Noah and Noah and Noah. <laughs> Brother, until in the church, you would think that this is Noah and his group. Because your level of thinking is narrowed down to your little boat. But here we have a message Amen. that could tell us, my brother, my sister, it's not just the building of the boat. It's coming over into another day, into another land and walking on the ashes of the wicked. Hallelujah. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Moses, Noah's ministry was not just to build an ark and have three stories. Amen. That, 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 real, that real ark of Noah was, I mean, we, we, can, we can go deep in that now in this hour. 
Noah's message was repentance. Yes. You can't go anything further without repentance. But if you're in the ark, you can see the mystery of the dove and the raven. When you're in the ark, you can see natures are being subdued. Why? You've got into the ark. You can see the Eden glory has come back. Why? You are in the ark. You can touch the lion. You can touch all things. It's not just Noah's message of repentance. It's now stepping into the ark and see so you are back into the Eden glory. Oh, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Because when he was in the ark, before he was in the ark, you don't find Noah going close to the lion. You don't find him going close to the wild animals. You don't hear about it. You understand what I'm saying? Because they were in their fallen state, they became carnivores. Listen to what I'm saying. There was no carnivores before the fall. I look at how the steak lovers is looking at me now. That's why when we go back, you're not going to have steak anymore. Amen. So eat as much as you want to now. <laughs> There's not going to be steaks anymore. Sorry. You're going to eat fruits, my brother. You that don't want cabbage, yes, I'll cabbage eat, Papa. <laughs> you're going to eat all those things. Why? Why? Our natures are changing. To what? Back to the original condition. There's going to be no Nando's. There's going to be no ESCOM. There's going to be no power failure. There's going to be no speakers. There's going to be no preacher. A favorite one. No, there's not going to be. And I'm so happy there's going to be no song leader, no church. We don't have to worry with who's singing false and who's singing this note and who's up there. One brother said, the going up with your voice is okay, but the coming down is a problem. <laughs> what am I showing you? Nature is going to change. It's not just the message of repentance, but it's moving into the ark and nature that change all things are under your feet. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Leaving the doctrines of baptism and laying on of, oh, excuse me. Now I'm going to tramp on some of your toes. Pastor, please pray for me. When are we moving from that? Look, there's no cutoff. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's no cutoff for laying on of hands. But brother and sister, we should get to such a level where you don't even need somebody to lay hands on you. Right. Exactly right. And it's a higher bracket of faith now. Yeah. You're going beyond oil. Yeah. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Yeah. I said you're even going beyond oil. Yeah. Because if you are sick, they must anoint you with what? Oil. Yeah. But this kind of faith is going beyond oil. Yeah. It's going beyond the laying on of hands. Yeah. Now you speak. Now you speak and you go forward. Oh, I, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying this morning. Oh, glory to the most high God. Leaving the doctrine of baptism and laying on of hands and the resurrection. Uh, excuse me. You're sitting so quiet this morning. I'm worried. Are we in the same church or what? And the resurrection. Yo. Now, if I look at this thing nicely, some people want to see miracles and healing. And, and Paul says, that's the principles. That's the first things. That's the first pull. Move away from that. Go to something more perfect. No, no, I, I, that was a very low amen because some of us love miracles. Am I right? We want to see the coffin open. Yeah. The white coffin of Santa. Eh? <laughs> you see that guy mocked so much the, the, the resurrection. He died eventually after that. Yeah. Yeah. He mocked the resurrection. I wonder is he going to have a resurrection. 
He can't have it. He mocked the resurrection. So how can he come up in the first resurrection? It's impossible. You can't mock God. No, where's the pastor? Why don't you raise him again from the dead? He can't. Why? Why? He never raised him up in the first place. He was a mimic. It was artificial. But do you know what they do, brother and sister? They use that to lift up the people's faith. It, would, it doesn't surprise me if some genuine healings will take place. With an artificial display like that. That's why the Bible says they will do signs and wonder in so much. That if it was possible, it would have deceived the elect. But the elect can't be deceived. Why? We've moved on. We've moved on. We've left the signpost. The first pool healing was the signpost. The second pool healing was the signpost discernment. And now we are in a third pool. When that which is perfect is come. Then that which is in part shall be done away with. And you see sometimes we sit with the battering from ministers in the message and even outside. They say, yeah, William Branham is dead. The churches are dead also. That's what they say. They say, he raised the dead. They can't raise the dead. He healed the sick. They can't heal the sick. The only difference between us and you is we don't major on minus. In other words, you won't find us having us on television and telling the whole world we are healing this one and healing that one. Yes, it's a healing case right here in front. Yes, it's a healing case right here. Do you find us broadcast? We don't want to broadcast it. Why? Why? Even Jesus says, tell nobody who, who healed you. Yeah, that's Bible, friends. He said, when they ask you, don't tell them who did it. But you see, mankind, we must get glory into somewhere. That's why I like what Paul did. And this is all the thoughts that I had. I'm off my notes. I don't know why. <laughs> That's why Paul, last night when I was studying Paul, Paul says, I knew a man. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. He says, whether in the flesh, I cannot tell. He says, such a man was caught up in the third heaven. Now, I want you to notice Paul is separating that man from this man. He speaks of that man as though that man is greater than this man. And it is, brother. Because if you want to see that man, then you don't worry about this man. Listen to what I'm saying, brother. He says, I knew a man. What man was that? It was the theophany man. Brother Man said he saw his body laying next to his second wife, but he was caught up to his first wife. He says, it was, he said, I'm looking, I'm thinking that, I'm saying all of that. He said, but I knew what I'm thinking, but I'm here and I'm also there and I'm there and I'm all, what is this happening? Sounds confusing, but he has the same experience like Paul. I knew a man, whether in the body, I cannot tell. And then Paul says, a messenger of, a messenger of Satan was sent to me to buffet me, lest I should exalt myself. Because Paul had a problem. And his problem was, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees. Yeah. Hebrew of all Hebrews. Yeah. Born from the tribe of Benjamin. Yeah. Have you heard him say that? <laughs> so Paul knew how, how this man feels when this man, this man is uplifted up. When this man is worshipped. Brother, get out of this man. Your thinking should, I know a man. Your desire should be, I want to get into that man. Hallelujah! Your desire should be, I'm going to put on the earthly and put on the heavenly. He says, in such one I would glory. And that body was a word body. This body is a stinking body. He's fraught, man. He's fraught. Take off your shoes. Yes, your foot is stunk. <laughs> After the service, some of us like me will have to go and take a bath. <laughs> we can't last for one hour, two hours. 
And you want to glory with this guy? This guy don't need glory, brother and sister. Keep him under subjection. Keep him under the flare, under the ribs. Why? You have another body waiting. Because when this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, I have already. The land was waiting for them. The body is waiting for you. Before you were ever, ever expressed, the land was already there. Before the children of Israel came to the promised land, the land was already there. Can you say amen? amen? I know the church had started not, recently, uh, not, not so long ago in the message. And I'm just saying this to help you. Not to belittle anyone, but just to, to encourage you. So they started this church under the, 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 the prophet that was here. You guys know the prophet from uh, Ghana. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So they had his church starting and they called all the people to come for the healing and for the miracles with the intention to start the church based on this prophet, miracle prophet, healing prophets ministry. So the prophet was there the first week, the second week, the third week. And when the prophet was deported back to Ghana, the church fell apart. The church fell apart. Why am I saying that? What was the attraction? It wasn't the word. Why do we need to major on minus? When we have the word, my brother, my sister. <laughs> and the church fell flat because there's no more healings. Prophet is gone. Because they hang on the prophet. Let's take it further. Some of you can hang on the flesh of William Branham. And you'll be disappointed. You shouldn't be hanging on William Branham's flesh. Amen. William Branham didn't bring us salvation or redemption. Yes. Yes. You were saved before the foundation of the world. Amen. Oh, that was very hard for some of you. I, I see it, it didn't, didn't go off so well. Let me say that again. Let me just repeat what I'm saying. William Branham didn't bring us redemption. No, he can't. You know why? Because we were already redeemed before the foundation of the world. God only sent him to bring us back to our head. Place it, brother. Place it correctly. That is why we are not going to be disappointed. Because we are not hanging on flesh. People that are on the internet, people that are all over, and they feel he made a mistake here. And I mean, they didn't leave the sign post yet. That's why they're not going to perfection because they're hanging on the flesh of a man. But not the bride of Jesus Christ. Because Rebecca is not going with Eliezer. She's going with Isaac into a tent vision. I'm going to shock you with another one. William Branham didn't bring predestination to you. You were already predestinated before the foundation of the world. That's why he said, behold, I send unto you. Elijah, because you were already predestinated. Are you understanding that church? You were already in the mind of God. You're going to fail miserably if you hang on flesh. Amen. That's why when Moses died, the people that came out with Moses also died. All of them. Not one of them left, brother. But when Joshua came on the scene, remember now, the people asked Joshua, no, did you meet the pillar of fire? He says, yes, I did. Did you see the fire? Did you see the cloud? He says, no, I saw the person. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear what I said. You see, if we must judge now between Joshua's ministry and Brother Benham says, Joshua had more to do than Moses. Yeah. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Yeah. Whose ministry is greater, Joshua or Moses? If we must compare miracles, Moses had more miracles. Moses had a lot of things on his hand. But Joshua had more to do than Moses because his ministry was adoption. Placing. The placing ministry to place the church positionally. 
That's why under the Joshua Commission, there is now officers that are now going amongst the people and the officers are telling the people, tomorrow after three days, we are going in. Yes. Officers. Yes. And the officers is the fivefold ministry. Yes. They don't question Joshua. Amen. Joshua said, I, 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 I was there when Moses went up to the mountain. I saw the cloud. I wasn't there when the pillar of fire came down when Moses was alone in the backside of the desert. He said, but then it, I came one day and I was ready to take Jericho. And then that same one that spoke to Joshua, to Moses came down and spoke to me. Yes. He says, how do you know it's him? He says, I know it's him. Yeah. How do you know it's him? Because the same presence I felt on the mountain is the same presence I felt here. Yeah. Can you see why we can't be deceived? Because the same, bre uh, same presence that was in the Brenner meetings is the same presence that's in our midst. That is why we can't be deceived. We can't be deceived. If it was possible, it would have deceived the very elect. But the elect cannot be deceived. You got to say that about yourself, brother and sister. No matter how many things they're trying to bring up against Moses, they cannot prove the message wrong. Now that I was in the book of Leviticus, I showed the church back home. And sorry that I'm deviating. I showed the church back home. I said to them, you know what? If we must really study the things that Moses brought, we would really challenge Moses on it. If I was there and I was living in that day and I didn't understand what God was doing, I would have probably challenged Moses. They said, what do you mean? I said, Moses comes with burnt offerings and all the offerings. Well, before Moses was even there, we had offerings before him. So I would tell Moses, you're bringing nothing new. Moses would say, yes, I'm not bringing anything new. I'm just bringing the sense to it. So people are thinking under the William Branham ministry, he's going to bring something new. No, brother. He's just bringing what has already been said. But he's just bringing the order of it. Because many of them are saying, well, you know, uh, the Godhead is not new. Yes, it's not new. What did you expect? Well, the, the baptisms in the name of, the laying on of hands, we've done handkerchiefs and only believe in. Uh, we, we know all these things. He brought nothing new. Well, Clarence Larkin also brought this in. And Schofield also said, yes, they must, they man of God. We read the same Bible. But they didn't get the message within the Bible. So you can have Genesis, you can have Exodus, you can have Numbers, you can have Leviticus, and you can have Deuteronomy, and still not have the right thing. The Jews are still reading Leviticus today. But they don't have the understanding of it. Why? They missed the angel. They missed the messenger of the covenant that was supposed to take them out of the law and bring them to Christ. You're not hearing what I'm saying. When you miss the messenger, then you miss your exit, your off ramp. And that is dangerous. <laughs> to miss the off ramp, you might travel a long way to come back, brother. <laughs> yeah. And then you get some funny people on the road when you ask them for directions. Go straight, ne? go straight, 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 straight. And then you come there by that corner, nah? go straight, 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 straight. Then you come there by that shop, nah? go straight, 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 straight. Amen. Brother, they don't know where, and you find yourself doing this because this guy that goes straight, go straight, go straight. That's right. Amen. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I've gone straight a couple of times. And then one day, somebody said to me, if you are lost, just follow a taxi. Follow a taxi, the taxi will take you to town. Now, brother and sister, if you don't know, you, you must watch what sign is on the taxi also. Because you'll follow the wrong taxi. You'll end up by Barra instead of Johannesburg. There has been churches and churches and brides and brides, but there's only one taxi that will lead you to the destination. 
and that's the bride of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! She's the house of prayer. Amen. She's the house of all nations. To follow her, it will bring you to your destination. Because she knows what he once done with the word. But the guy outside is going to tell you, go right, na? go right. And you go, 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 go. <laughs> I think some of you have been there before. Huh? <laughs> Does it sound familiar? Can you imagine you're sitting under a ministry that is telling you, just go straight, na? just go straight. Just go, na? just go, just go. Just come to church, na? just pay your tithes, na? just wear your long dress, just go, just be straight, 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 straight. But he never takes you to perfection. Thank God. Thank God. Joshua is here. Yeshua. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's here to bring us to an expected end. Amen. Listen what he says. I'm reading the amplified version. He said the laying on of hands and the what? The resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do. Verses 3. <laughs> we will do it if God permits <laughs> yeah? you come in here and you, you are looking where's the miracle I had a bike guy coming to church and he was looking for miracles in fact a sister she said to me brother Brian there's no healing here there's no nothing here no healing no 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 I, say, I said well, what are you talking about are you looking for miracles and you are in the message? Go back to where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. It's a greater miracle than, divide, than healing the cripple walk. The salvation of one soul is greater than the healing of cancer. It's greater than limbs being spoken. It's greater than giving birth to a baby. I'm, I'm, I must be right. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. What are we looking for? Amen. What is our emphasis? Yeah. What are we coming to church for? Amen. Leave the doctrines. Leave the principles. Move on to perfection. Amen. We have to get past the elementary stage. Amen. And advance to completeness. Amen. And perfection. Amen. That belong to spiritual maturity Amen. baptism repentance from dead works etc are the signposts and too many people are hanging around the signposts Amen. pastors in the message are leaving the message because they want the signpost they want the healing they want the healing brother we will do those things if God permits <laughs> <laughs> we will raise the dead if the occasion rises to raise the dead but it is better for you to get out of your dead condition and your dead works in your mind and step into faith that is much higher than a normal resurrection let us rather put you in the first resurrection because that resurrection in church is not the first resurrection <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. there's only one first resurrection and then there's two, the second resurrection right but when you are raised here in the church from the dead it doesn't mean you are now coming in the resurrection because the person that is raised from here can still miss the first resurrection <laughs> hello <laughs> I'm just making sure you're not going straight 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 I said the person <laughs> the, <laughs> the person that's raised from the dead in church doesn't mean he's going to be in the first resurrection Lazarus was raised from the dead. He died after that. Yeah. And plus he must wait for the first resurrection. Oh, you didn't know that. He must wait for all of us to come and meet him. Yes, I know he's there. I know they all came up in the first. In Matthew, all the dead saints came up. But they must all wait for us. Because they without us cannot be made. Am I making sense? 
I'm just making sure that you're not going straight, 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 straight. <laughs> we must progress to the perfect word. And that is our position in Christ. Is the perfect word. Are you hearing me? Many people are falling off the wagon because they haven't progressed to the perfect word. They are hanging around, hanging around, hanging around for a new man to come, for a new one to be on the show. And then they come up with new things. New men, new great ones, new bigger ones. Amen. Until another one comes on the scene because spirits don't die. Yeah. Yeah. Right now in the message we have so many gods. In Africa alone, I think we have many gods. Eh? Uh, in Nigeria, we have a god of Nigeria in the message. In Ghana, in, 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 in all over. In Zim, in South Africa. Amen. Not far. We have them here. <laughs> they are gods. They are gods. Everybody wants to be a god. They want to exist with the people. They are mimicking the real program. Spirits. Spirits that are trying to de uh, de detour us. Amen. But brother, you think we will fall for that nonsense? We won, brother. Amen. You can be a God, brother. I am the real God. Yes. Oh, no, look now. No, no, no. Ah, uh, people. Yes. Aren't you amateur gods? Yes. Aye, people. You see, you didn't come out yet. You see, you are still street, 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 street. Come out. If you say to this mountain, Wasn't Adam a God? Amen. Didn't Adam have all things under his feet? Yes. So the guys that wants to be God is mimicking Genesis. Amen. Because they know, demons know, it's time for the Eden glory to be restored. And Brother Brenham says, since the opening of the seals, the same glory, the Eden glory has come back to the church. So the devils heard that quote. Oh, oh, people, you, where was the devil when the prophet preached? He was there in hell. Ah, he was there. The devil knows the move, brother. You are sitting in church. The devil also waited under the seventh seal. <laughs> Hi, people. Now, now listen. Brother Brenham says, if the devil picks this up, he'll do what? Damage. Has he done it? Yeah, no, no, come on. Didn't he pick it up? You want to leave it there, 1956, the devil is still worried about it, the seventh seal open of it, the, uh, the devil knows all things, brother. He can't get the Holy Ghost, but he's got, he caught the information, not the revelation. <laughs> he caught it, he knows the seals are open, he knows what we are preaching, because God is transmitting inspiration to the, to the fivefold ministry, and the devil is also there, the Dayton's and the Corinth are also there, they're picking up, oh, that's what's happening, oh, we are here, oh, and the people, in church wonder where we are Have mercy, Lord. the Bible said the devil believed there is one God Amen. and he trembles Amen. but there's no trembling among us Amen. don't go straight 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 eh? listen now nicely be careful brother and sister we need to move on my time is up I've got five minutes here did I, did I, did I, five minutes, yeah, I'm just checking, my eyes are not so bad, I want to read quickly the amplified version, then I can take you to a few things before I, before I close, he says, now therefore, listen to the amplified version, let us get past the elementary stage in the teachings about the Christ, advancing on to maturity, and perfection, and spiritual completeness, Doing this without laying, a hand of the, uh, laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works towards faith. Of teaching, of washing, ritual purifications. Laying on of hands the resurrection of that and eternal judgment. These are all important matters in which you should uh, have been uh, proficient long ago. You should have been proficient long ago. I'm not speaking about the new ones that are coming in that we have to teach. That's different. But the ones that are here, yeah. yeah. you should have come out of that long time ago. Still stuck with dress code. Pasta, pasta, pasta. 
Come on, brother. We we pass that man. Now. Yeah. Oh, we, 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 we way down the road from yeah. sisters, sisters, sisters. Yeah. What about the brothers that are worse today, man? Come on. Yeah. You preach so much of a sister, the sisters are not lining up, but the brothers. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They've gone street, 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 street. Until this one said, Yeah, humble and I can. And he took the focus off him. Do you understand what I'm saying, church? We need to move on. I'm not saying those things are not important. We have them. But you cannot expect, expect Pastor Hannes to come here every Sunday and preach on dress code because you don't have you have a problem with that sister's dressing. That can be dealt behind doors. And it's nobody else's business. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. The pastor don't have to come here. I saw that sister so and so out. I saw that sister and brother so and so. I saw them. No, no, no. He comes to preach the word. Amen. Not to come and give you stories. Amen. To feed your flesh. We have to feed the inner man. Why? We want to get into a new man. Amen. So as Israel prepared to cross over. The officers, the fivefold ministry, pointed the people to the ark. What is the ark? The word. Yes. Now, I want you to show you something that's very important here, brother and sister. Here is Michal. Now, I, I, I need to show you because whatever's uh, playing out today has already transpired because there's nothing new under the sun. Is that right? Whatever God was going to do in this day, He already revealed it in shadows and in types. Christ the mystery. Remember, He said it, it's all, it's all in the shadows and the types. Amen. So yes, David, he's seven years in Hebron. He's ruling. He's the king of Hebron. Then he must become king of Jerusalem. The king of Jerusalem, which is Saul, is, is dead now. So David needs to move from his seven-year ministry and move down into Jerusalem. Catch what I'm saying now church. Right. We have our Lord Jesus. In the seven church ages. And it's to leave the ages. And go back to Jerusalem. To become king of Jerusalem. But before he does. He must restore his wife first. Because he says to them. Bring Michal to me. Michal comes from Michael. Michael means one who is like God. He says, bring me my wife. Restore my wife back. Now remember, he wants his wife after seven years. Oh, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. He wants his wife after seven church ages. Are you hearing me, church? But he married her before he started the ages. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He already married Michael before he was ruler for seven years. But he says, before I go to Jerusalem, restore my wife. Yes. And they brought the wife back. And she comes with five children. He said, huh? <laughs> Whose children are these? She says, while you are away, <laughs> my father gave me to another man. You better be careful if a minister don't give you to another man. Because your headship is the word Christ. Oh, I hope you're hearing me well now this morning. He must point you to the word, your head Christ. She says, while you were away, uh, my father gave me to another man. She comes back with five children. David says, okay, no problem. Come into the kingdom. I want you to notice, he's giving her another chance. He's giving another chance to come in. So she comes into the palace. She's there with her five children. That is Pentecost now. Because if you study the history of Azusa Street, there was five sons born under the Azusa Revival. Go study them. William Seymour and all of them. There were five important men. Go check the history. That started the Azusa revival. This is Michal coming back with the five boys. Pentecost. 
She didn't know that God is going to switch her with the one that is better than her. And that is Bathsheba. He had a switch between Bathsheba and Michal. So she's coming back. She's in the temple. She, I mean, she's in the palace. And, and here, Josh, David had a desire to bring the word back. Listen, I, I don't know if I'll be able to finish this. I'll have to preach it some other time again. I didn't even touch my notes. I went straight, straight, straight. Then I made a U-turn and I came now back. <laughs> so what happened is, David had a desire for the ark to come back. Remember, if the desire is there, there must be something. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You cannot have a desire and there's nothing to fulfill that desire. You cannot long for heaven and there isn't a heaven for you. You cannot long for a theophany and there isn't a theophany for you. God already gave you the desire. That's why, brother, you have no choice in this. Your desire shall be unto your husband. Oh, you didn't catch what I said. Didn't God said that in Genesis? And her desire shall be? Oh, wow. Her desire will be unto her husband. So now we leave it only with Eve. Her desire will be only for her husband. What about us? The third Eve. Where's your desire? For your husband, people. I only want my husband. Ask a sister whose husband is maybe traveling for a while. You see her, she's not the same anymore. <laughs> you ask, what's wrong? My husband. <laughs> Her desire is to be with him. Amen. Brother Ben says, while he's away, she writes a letter to him. She says, the children, this and the, this, this and the, this, that and the. He says, I'm reading exactly. I'm saying like the Malawians, exactly. Remember the little and the switched. Yeah. I'm saying it off the pulpit. So, so. <laughs> so, do you understand what I'm saying? So, you have to understand your desire shall be unto your husband. Nobody else, brother. And you can read between the lines. That's why when we got our letter. He's telling you about the law of reproduction and whatever. He's telling you something. Amen. What is he telling you? I'm longing to be with you. I don't want to be alone. I've been alone for millions and millions of years. I want to be. And what are you saying? My desire shall be unto him. So yes, Michal, brother and sister. So David goes. He fetches the ark. Do you know the ark was away for seven months? Aha, go study. When the ark was left, it left the house of Eli, Shil uh, Shiloh, left the house. Remember when the Philistines came in? They took the ark and it went and they put the ark in the house of Dagon. Is that right? Can you imagine now if we would think logically, brother and sister, here's a stone and here's wood. But the stone is falling before the wood. It sounds like, ay, come on. But it's not the wood, it's one that dwells between the wood. <laughs> it's God wrapped in humanity. Are you with me? So yes, Michal, David has the desire, the ark is away for seven, seven months, seven church ages. The ark has gone from one house to the next house, from one house to the next house. And here finally, it comes to the house. But David must go and fetch it. And David says, go fetch me the ark. Because those people prospered out when the word was in the ark. Yeah. When the ark was in the house, they prospered. Amen. Yes. And you can't tell me Pentecost didn't prosper. Yeah. They're still prospering. Yeah. Because the ark was there at one point. Yeah. But the ark left Pentecost. Yeah. And now, brother and sister, Michal is restored. She's in the palace. But she doesn't understand why she was there, who she's married to, why she had to keep herself. She had to come up and say, Daddy, I'm already a married woman because she's part of Israel. Yeah. 
Come on. Her father made her break the word. Because she knows that she can't marry somebody else when she has a living husband by law. She's a girl of Israel. But she went because the father's word was above the word of God. That's what the salt spirit brings. Saul feels he's above the word. He's above the law. If he changes it, it's changed. Whatever he said, it's done. That's a salt spirit. I'm saying it under the anointing. That's a soul spirit that feels I can change the word. You need to come up to my level to change the word. It's a soul demon. Amen. Saul didn't have the Holy Ghost on him. He had a demon on him. Amen. And only the music could take that demon away for a little while. And after a while the demon is back. Who's it? Amen. <laughs> come on people, come on. I'm just saying it the way it is. Let me say it in our common language. A demon goes out for a smoke break. While Saul feels holy, Lord, thank you, Lord. Ah, Saul cries, ah, Lord. Ah, ah, oh, Lord, forgive me. Ah. He goes out. Demon says, my smoke break is over. Brah, Saul, how's it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it in a way for you to, 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 to so it can. It must sit there. It must sit right there. And guess what? Saul couldn't get rid of that demon Amen. until Saul goes to the Nyangas. You know, Moses. Yeah, the, the, the wise people. Otherwise. Some is wise, some is otherwise. <laughs> now listen. I'm about, I'm about to close. I said about to, ne? Not, I said about. about. Don't say I'm lying. I said about. So Mikal, the word has gone seven church ages away. She is back into the temple or the, the, the palace. The word is... The word is coming back. David is putting on, J David is changing garments. He put off his priest, his, his kingly garment, and he puts on a priestly garment. One man, different offices. He put on the ephod, he puts it on, and he starts dancing before the throne. And what is she looking at? She says, look at him. Look at him. Look how he behaves. Look at the mistake that people are making when they have been restored. They've been pulled in. But they're not, they're not looking at the ark. No, no, no. They're looking at the man. And David says, you're looking at me the way I dance. Do you not pick up what it feels like? As you were restored, so the word is restored. Can you not see the parallel of your rest restoration and the word's restoration? That you've come right in. That's why I could make atonement for you. I am now the high priest. I can now be touched by the feeling of your infirmities. Can you see? We see Jesus as king, but we don't see him as priest. And guess what, brother and sister? He can't be king of kings unless you crown him. <laughs> he must still go to Jerusalem. Then we can crown him king of kings. I want to ask you, is he leaving the Gentiles dispensation? Can you say amen if you believe that? Is he going to Jerusalem? Then he's going to become after that king of kings. Because we must crown him king of kings. Because he's going back to where he started. Did David start in Jerusalem? Yeah. yeah. Saul chased him out and then he came right back again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you're understanding what I'm saying, church. Huh? There's a desire for you to go back. There's a desire for you to be so. But Michal, don't make the same mistake. She looked at the ark. She looked at the prophet. David was a prophet. Do you believe that? Are you with me? David could put on a priestly garment. He wasn't a priest to go in and burn incense. Don't get me wrong there. But he was king. But in that period of time, you could put on a priestly garment. Was David allowed to eat the things that was in the, in the temple? The shoe bread? Yes. When he ran away. When he ran away. They said, we have no bread here. And what did David eat? The shoe bread. <laughs> According to the Levitical law, he broke the laws. 
because he the Levites could go in there. But this was a man after God's own heart. <laughs> I'm showing you, my brother and my sister. I'm showing you the privilege that you have. It's wonderful when one thinks about it. Look at the word. The placing of the word is important to us. Don't look at what's happening around you. You want to look at David's mistakes? David had a lot of mistakes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, David had a lot of mistakes. Eh? Yeah. I mean, he waits for a man to die, then he someone takes his wife. I mean, think about it. The woman can't even grieve shame Abigail. She couldn't even grieve David was there. How's it? <laughs> Aye, Baba. This woman is crying, weeping. Oh, my husband. David says, no, come. I'm the comforter. <laughs> Uh, so if you want mistakes, David can give you a lot of mistakes, brother. Yeah, yeah. And David, even in David's house, there's lots of things. So if you want mistakes in a message, you'll find them. Yeah, of course, you'll get it. There's things that he said before 1963. There's things that he said after 1963. There's things that he said that, that, that doesn't make sense sometimes. Does it change the message? <laughs> it doesn't change the commission, my brother and my sister. Amen. Because we're not hanging on the flesh. Amen. We are looking at the word. Amen. The office was pointing to the word. Let me, let me say this in closing. I'm going to close, I promise. The ark was always sacred in Israel's relationship with God. The ark. If that ark was important to Israel... And that was their way how they can relate to God and worship God through that ark. What about us today, brothers? Then it means we must have the word for today. Amen. To be in fellowship with God and have a relationship with God. We need the ark. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? The ark itself impacted in the history of God's people. The first mention we have of the ark is in Genesis chapter 6. When God was to issue a worldwide destruction... And offered the ark as a place of safety. The ark that Noah built was very unusual. It was something the world had never seen before. And judgment was unlike anything they imagined. And the people must have boasted. They must have had their boats. And they must have uh, uh, had their own ships or so forth. Amen. Because it was an intellectual generation. You can imagine how many people tried to help Noah build the ark. I, if you were a scientist in that day, you would have said, Noah, this wood will not work. That size will not work for the whole world. You're going to need a couple of boats. In other words, you need a ministry there, and you need a ministry there, and you need a ministry there. And then you put us all under you. Look at the hierarchy. Then you place us all under you, and then we are all are in our own boats. It sounds like a bad idea, but Moses said, God said, I must build one ark. Amen. Noah said, God said, one ark. Amen. Because it was the intellectual. Brother Bram said they already had atomic power yeah. in Noah's day. Yeah. This missile that they have today is nothing compared to what they have. Those missiles could build, brother. Yeah. They had robotics Amen. that could lay stone upon stone. Ha, ah, you didn't know that. Brother Bam says they used rockets. Amen. Yeah, to lift up stones, to build it and lay it. And they could cut, how could you cut the stone so precise and fit in and build a permit? Highly intellectual age. Right. Today they can't even preserve people's bodies. Amen. But they did it back in the day. Amen. I'm going to close people, just bear with me. But not a massive ark on dry land. Can you imagine? A massive ark on Noah, 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 oh, here, what mark ye? Let's build the ark close to the river. So when the rain comes, we push the ark. If there is going to be rain. If there's not going to be rain, we can take a journey on your boat. But to build an ark 
on dry land. Noah. Would you have followed Noah's message? Exactly. You wouldn't have followed Noah's message. Because it's unusual. It doesn't make scientifically sense. But people today wants to make scientifically sense of the prophet's message. You're treading on dangerous grounds. Because God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. To build an ark on dry land doesn't sound right to me. And the ark was different from all the other boats. And the arks that people had, may, may have had in that day. In Genesis 6.14, God told Noah to make it with gopher wood and pitch it within and without. In the ark was the prophet, the one who brought the word to that generation. So when you get into the ark, you'll find a prophet that carries the word for that day. Amen. Outside of that, you'll find other boats. Amen. The one that goes straight, 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 straight. <laughs> that boats can't reverse. Yes, <laughs> the ark that Noah represented, well, built and represented the word that he preached. Amen. It became God's provided way. Musicians, you can make your way. It was God's only place of worship. Right. Having many boats sounded like a good idea. Having many churches sounded like a good idea. But there's only going to be one true bride. Amen. That entire generation rejected that prophet's message. Amen. Brother and sister, I woke up this morning with a burden on my heart. And the thing that God laid on my heart was this one thing. He said, except the days are shortened, no flesh. Listen to that scripture. No flesh will be saved. Does it include you and I? If God doesn't shorten the days, you and I in the next couple of years will not be serving God. Oh, here I help us. But God's omnipotent grace, God's provision, shorten the days for us. Because he knows you won't be able to keep and go on until the end. How many people are falling? How many people was in church? How many people is out? How many people have a desire to serve God, but they can't keep up serving God? They leave, they come, and they go. And we sympathize. Because it's not the father's desire that any should go lost. Is that true? But brother, get to the point here. The thing of it is, unless God shortens the days. So God is doing his part so that you and I can be saved. Because as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in this day. Oh Lord, have mercy. Let me just finish this thought quickly. In Exodus chapter 2. We see God preparing to deliver Israel from Egypt. An edict went out from Pharaoh that every male child must be killed. And it was at this time that Amram and Yoshebet had a son. And they hid him away from the Egyptians for three months. Then they made an ark of bulrushes to put the body or the baby boy in and float down the river. Which was full of crocodiles. In order to keep it from. Uh, to, be, to keep it waterproof. And crocodile proof. Yeah. They had to dab the ark with slime and pitch. And it had to be applied within. And without. God didn't change his pattern. The ark of Noah. Was pitched within. And without. And the ark of Moses was pitched within and without to keep it waterproof to keep it crocodile proof can we take it further to keep it demon proof and jezebel proof babylon proof to keep babylon all the influence of the water the beast that comes out of the water it's important brothers that we see this 
Don't worry, I'm closing. In order to keep it waterproof and crocodile proof, they had to dub the ark with slime and pitch. And it had to be applied within and without. When Pharaoh's daughter opened the ark, she found the prophet, the word of the hour. When Pharaoh's daughter opened up the ark, she was a Gentile. She would have remained childless. But because God gave her a son. For unto us a son is given. He was born in Amram and Yoshebet's house. But unto us the Gentiles a son is given. His name shall be Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Can you see that church? Now the word, the prophet, is being handled by the Gentile church. They are going to bring the word to maturity. They are going to bring the word to the fullness of age. They are going to raise up the child in the way that they should go. And it will never depart from him. So this Gentile was handling now the word. Let's go on. In Exodus 25, 10 to 11, I'm just quoting these things. God told Moses to make an ark of shittim wood and overlay it with gold within and without. Amen. Study Exodus 25. God doesn't change his ways in the way he says things. He says, overlay the wood, the ark that you're going to make Moses. Overlay it with gold on the outside and gold on the inside. Within and without. Are you hearing me? Yes. And the ark Moses had to place the word, the commandment. Amen. And the pillar of fire would come down in the most holy place over the ark. Amen. When Solomon built the temple, the construction took about 49 years. And uh, it was the only way the ark was put in its place that the cloud would come and fill the house. That is in 1 Kings 8. Notice also in verses 9, there, were, there was nothing in the ark save the two tablets of stone which Moses placed in there. You can read all about Moses, his upbringing, his life story, but the message was placed in the ark. What is our focus, brother? If we should hear the life story of Moses, he's a murderer. I wouldn't follow murder. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. But here you had to follow him by faith. He had a word for his day. Would you follow Abraham? Because to me, the whole Philistines know Abraham is a liar. The newspapers pecked. Abraham didn't lie the first time. He also lied the second time. He's a lying prophet. Eh? Sure, it's hard. But God said, let Abram pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> because God wasn't looking at what the man was doing in the flesh. God was looking at predestination. God was looking at the father of many nations. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? In Revelation 5, John sees one sitting on the throne. And in his hand he had a little book sealed. With seven seals, sealed within and without. So our act today is the seven seal message. God has never changed his ways. He never changed his pattern. If you want to know that you are in the right movement, you need something that's laid within and without. What is the act today? It's the seven seals. In the seals is the entire word. Yes. Nothing but the word. When it is in its rightful place, the cloud would come down. What, that is what God honors. It's the word, brother and sister. Always put the word first. Yes. And the word will go before you all the time. And then the Holy Ghost will come down and back up the word. Look at Phineas' wife. She's unnamed in 1 Samuel chapter 4. She's a nameless woman. Yet she had a strong conviction for the word. 
she was pregnant and, and Israel was gone into war with the Philistines. And the news came back that Israel was defeated. Her husband was dead. Her father-in-law fell on his back and he broke his neck incurable, dead right there. And the news put her in birth pains. And the birth of a son which should be the most happiest time for an Israelite brought sorrow and death to this woman. In the last breath, she named her son Ichabod. She said, the glory of God has departed. Not because the death of the family, not because of the war of Israel that they lost, but because the Philistines took the ark. That's why she said Ichabod. Brother and sister, if we take, remove the word, it's Ichabod. Any church, any house, any ministry, if the word is removed, it's Ichabod, my brother, my sister. That is why the placing of the word is important to us. Always put the word first. I want to say this in closing. Eli never placed the ark above all. He compromised with his sins or the sins of his children. Never placed the word above. Saul never placed the word above. Always put the word first. Above your feelings. Above your sentiments. If you really love your children, apply the token. Don't give them and don't give in to your children. Tell them the word of truth. God will honor the word. Brother Bim says, and as I was with Moses, says Joshua, the Holy Ghost, put the word ahead of the clergy. He put the word ahead of the clergy. The ministers must follow the word. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Brother Benham goes on in paragraph 100. The word must be first over everything. If we stay behind the word, we are bound to win. Listen to the prophet. You are bound to win, my brother, my sister. It's not your reputation. It's the word's reputation. Because the word will defeat the devil anywhere, anytime, under any condition. Not our own strength. Let's stand. Not our own ability. But his strength. Let us stand together. Brother Bam says in time-tested memorials, every situation must give way to God's eternal word. Listen to what I'm saying. Every situation must give way to God's eternal word. If it's put first in your life, every situation, everything must give way because you've put the word first in your life. You must come out right. You are bound to win. Wherever your foot souls, foot souls touch, you'll possess the gates of the enemy. Isn't Jesus wonderful this morning? Brother Ben says in the Hebrews book, he says, everything must be secondary to the word, to God Almighty. Everything else. God first. God first. He's the head. I told the church, that's why when you see in the Levitical law, they had two birds. I wanted to preach that to you this morning, but maybe next time. They had to ring off the neck of one bird. The one bird became headless. And the blood was sprinkled. So the head, the head is in the hand of the high priest. That's why in 1963, the head came down to show us I'm not dead, but I'm alive. And they took the blood, sprinkled the blood, but the other bird was bound. And they sprinkled all that blood on that bird. But she, had, she was kept bound until all the blood dripped on her. And when the blood finished dripped, she becomes now the ministry of the blood. Brother Bim says she sprinkled the blood all over the earth wherever she goes. Are you hearing me this morning? Why? She's now a carrier of the message. She's the carrier of the blood. I show the quotes. Brother Bim says there's a messenger of the covenant in the Bible in Malachi. Brother Bim says, but you are also messengers of the covenant. It doesn't stop with the prophet. You are also messengers. We are also carriers. Let us go in, my brother and my sisters. Let us possess the gates of the enemy. Every situation, 
All things are under your feet. Put the word first. Say, Lord, I'm putting you first this morning. Let us pray, all of us. Father, we bless you this morning. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, Lord. We've heard, Lord Jesus, that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word will remain the same forevermore. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we, Lord God, could come, Lord God, and some, Lord God, are putting away the word. But this morning, Lord Jesus, we are lifting up the word. Oh, Lord Jesus, you said in your word, I esteem my word higher than myself. Who is meant to separate the word from the spirit? Oh, God, help us this morning. Help us this morning to place the word correctly in front of us. Oh, God. Your prophet said, oh, God, that it was the most dangerous time. Oh, God, it was the most weather wise, Lord God. It was so, so, so difficult to cross the river Jordan at that time. But Lord Jesus, you brought them under that conditions because it was harvest time. You knew, Lord God, that it was going to take fight for them to move over. And Lord Jesus, the program was different this time, oh God. In the time of Moses, oh God, they didn't have an ark to go over the Red Sea. But this time, oh God, Lord Jesus, you had a fivefold ministry that carried the ark, that carried the word. In the first time they crossed the river, oh God, that Moses, the word failed in flesh. But Lord, this time, oh God, is the fivefold ministry carried the word and the people must be encouraged to go after the word oh God Lord this morning without a shadow of a doubt I see Lord a ministry here in Mayotin oh God that is driving your people that is pushing the people to go after the word to follow the word to follow Christ to see Christ that they can get the same results oh God I pray this morning Lord Jesus that you would Lord go before your people give them grace give them mercy as they choose journey along the way. We commit them into your hands in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's sing that song All is Well, All is Well as the song leader comes up. We are the deacon. We have heard the message Shalom, All is Well. All oh, Give me the right key, bro. Mm -hmm. All is well was sinking in the Red Sea and Miriam was excited that is the way that you are feeling this morning brother and sister speak and move forward don't see don't consider how big is your problem don't consider how the problem is difficult how your sickness is not getting healing Jesus is here Jesus is there to answer you your, your, your request. Jesus is here to heal you. Jesus is here to give you the job that you are looking for. Let's bow our head. Dieu tout puissant, Père éternel des armées, Seigneur Jésus Christ, nous sommes vraiment excités ce matin de joie. Toi, Père tout puissant, qui nous a bénis en nous accordant, Seigneur Dieu, cette grâce d'écouter cette parole si merveilleuse. Dieu Tout-Puissant, oh Dieu bien-aimé, qu'est-ce que nous pouvons encore te dire si ce n'est que te dire merci 
nous devons placer ta parole avant tout Seigneur Jésus Christ c'est ta parole qui doit nous conduire ce n'est pas nous qui devons conduire ta parole c'est pourquoi Père si nous nous laissons conduire par ta parole Seigneur Jésus Christ nous ne pouvons pas tomber c'est pourquoi Père nous venons à toi Seigneur te bénir Seigneur Jésus Christ et te glorifier Seigneur Jésus Bénis ton serviteur qui nous a parlé ce matin, Père Tout-Puissant, Dieu bien-aimé, nos cœurs brûlent au-dedans de nous, Seigneur. Seigneur Jésus-Christ, qu'est-ce que nous pouvons encore faire, Seigneur Christ, au Dieu, Père Céleste, si nous manquons, Seigneur Christ, au Dieu, cette parole. Et si, Père Tout-Puissant, cette parole nous rate, qu'est-ce qu'encore qui peut nous transformer, qu'est-ce que tout, qui peut encore changer nos vies Seigneur Jésus, nous venons à toi te remercier grandement, Seigneur Jésus-Christ, au Dieu, de ce que tu as fait pour nous ces jours. Dieu Tout-Puissant, bénis ton serviteur richement, Seigneur Jésus, et son Église. Bénis son épouse, le Père Tout-Puissant, toute sa famille, oh Dieu bien-aimé, c'est un homme. Il s'est épuisé, il a parlé, Seigneur Jésus-Christ, et nous nous sommes sentis heureux, Seigneur Christ, oh Dieu, Père Céleste, et nous te disons merci de cela. Et ce matin, Père, nous nous, nous, nous souvenons de notre pasteur qui n'est pas présent avec nous, Seigneur Jésus. Oh Dieu bien-aimé, nous te prions, Seigneur Dieu, même dans leur chemin de retour, Seigneur Dieu, que tu puisses les garder, les protéger, Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Dieu Tout-Puissant, bénis les Seigneur Dieu partout où ils peuvent se retrouver en ce moment, Seigneur Jésus-Christ, oh Dieu bien-aimé, et toi seul tu les gardes et que tu les protèges. Sois avec nous maintenant, Seigneur Dieu, alors que chacun de nous t'a apporté les problèmes, Seigneur Jésus-Christ, il y a ceux-là qui cherchent le travail, il y a ceux-là, Père Tout-Puissant, qui sont malades, Seigneur Christ, oh Dieu, Père Céleste, ils sont allés voir les médecins, Père Tout-Puissant, de différentes façons, Seigneur Jésus-Christ, oh Dieu bien-aimé, ils ne trouvent pas solution, mais nous savons que notre solution, c'est toi, notre Dieu, Seigneur Jésus, c'est toi en qui nous nous confions, Seigneur Dieu, toi en qui, Père Tout-Puissant, nous plaçons notre confiance, Dieu Tout-Puissant, merci au oh Dieu bien-aimé de ce que tu es en train de faire pour nous, Seigneur. Nous savons que quand nous allons sortir, au oh Dieu bien-aimé, nous n'allons pas sortir de la même façon. Si nous sommes venus malades, Seigneur Jésus-Christ, nous serons guéris, Seigneur Jésus, car tu es présent, Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Au oh Dieu bien-aimé, si nous avons des problèmes, Seigneur Dieu, ces problèmes ont déjà trouvé solution, Seigneur, parce que toi, tu es la solution. Tu as déjà donné la solution à nos problèmes, Seigneur. Sois glorifié, sois béni, Seigneur Jésus. Alors que Père Tout-Puissant, tous nous recommandons à toi, nous confions à toi, Seigneur. Ô oh Dieu bien-aimé, prends soin de nos prééminences. Ô oh Dieu bien-aimé, accomplis ta parole qui dit que l'ange de l'éternel campe autour de ceux qui le craignent et les arrache au danger. Ô oh Dieu bien-aimé, accompagne chacun de nous et quitte nos Père Tout-Puissant dans ta présence. Ô oh Dieu bien-aimé, quand nous serons chez nous à la maison, Seigneur, que cette parole, Père Tout-Puissant, Dieu bien-aimé, puisse, Seigneur, qui soit au Père Tout-Puissant, chaque fois, ô oh Dieu bien-aimé, nous stimuler, Père Tout-Puissant, entrer dans la prière, Seigneur Dieu, que tu nous donnes les ailes de prière, ô oh Père Tout-Puissant, oh Dieu bien-aimé, pour que nous soyons, Seigneur Dieu, en, en, en contact avec toi, Seigneur, qui soit Dieu permanent. Merci de ta grâce, merci de ta bonté, de ta grâce, Seigneur Christ, de ta miséricorde. Nous te glorifions, nous te bénissons éternellement, nous c'est avec foi, dans les pressions tout suffisantes de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, nous avons ainsi pris son Amen. God bless you, you can take your seat. Pastor Annette is greeting the church. Uh, there, is not, there will not be a midweek service. And I think uh, that that is all. You can can.
Yeah. Mm-hmm.